Hello friends, welcome to the SYBSC IT Semester 4 Embedded System Practicals. Today's practical is to demonstrate use of general purpose port that is input output port of two controllers for data transfer between them. To demonstrate this, we need a program like this, which is very simple program. We are going to use here two ports, P2 and P3. Initially, P2 is kept uh, with value 0 and then in an infinite loop we are increasing this P2 by just one value every time and then the values of P2 are assigned to P3. In this way one port will communicate or uh, one port will transfer the data to the another port. So this way we can demonstrate it here. So this is the debugging mode of the software which we are going to check that how one port transfer the data to the next or another port. So this is the key software ID will look like for this program. And uh, this is the simulator as I produced simulator where here there are two microcontrollers taken and the data which is uh, which is there on P2 is being transferred to the another microcontroller and on the port P3 of that microcontroller. To also ensure that data is being transferred, we are also going to connect your LED and we are going to simulate the output on this simulator with two different microcontrollers and data transfer between them. So let us see how this program is to be coded and executed. So type here heal software. So if you come to click open, you will get this ID. So very first you have to close all the projects. Now to start with new project, click on project, new micro region project. So here you have to give some name of uh, name to this project. So I'm writing here port demo data transfer. I'm just giving some relevant name. Uh, no need to give the extension, just click on save. Thereafter, it will prompt you to select the microcontroller. So, to select the microcontroller, you have to write 889C51. So, there it is, it's already searched. So, I'll select this and then click OK. For this file, you can simply click on no, that we are not going to add any startup code by default. Now you see that the project is created with this folder of target 1 and the source group 1 but there is no program here right now. So to add the program you have to click on this new file. You can also click on file and click on new. So this will give you no new text file. Now the program I have already written so I will just copy this program and then paste it here so that I will not be wasting my time in writing the code. So this is the normal text code or text file where the programming states making statements you see are only the statements or like a text. The next step is where we need to save this text file into .c file. So after doing that you see this file I am saving with some names. So I will use the same name as the my project name so it is not necessary to write the same name but i will be clicking it i will be keeping its uh, same name so that i can recall it properly so here is the name of my project so here you just have to give dot c remember this name can be any no need to give the same name as project so click on this. Now you see that this text file has got inducted in C and you see all the keywords are being highlighted with different color and density. Values, the variables are identified, even the matching curl devices etc. are identified. Now this file has got saved in .c extension, file extension. Now the next step is to add this file into the source group packet. To do so just right click on this and click on add existing files to this group. Here you can search for the file that C file. You see it is a C file that we have just created. So just click on add and close. 
So now we see that the source value for this y. The next step is to build this project. But before building, we need to have some settings. So just right click on this target, click on options for the target. Here in first target tab, you have to change the frequency so that it's 11, 1, 0, 5, 9, 2. Now this is in megahertz and this is the frequency on which our 805 microcontroller works well. Then click on output, click on create hex file. Then click OK. Now by clicking on this or just right clicking on this and clicking on build target, the target will be built and it will be the hex file for your project. Now this hex file we can use in this ISIS Pratis simulator. Before doing that, here in debug mode also we can check how one port transport or transfer data from one port to another port. To do so, you can click on debug, click on start stop debug session. So it will ask you for this uh, memory limit, you just click on OK. Now here to check that how one port transfers the data to the another port, you have to click on peripherals. In peripherals, click on IO port. Since you see we have used P2 and P3 port, so here also we have to put this port 2 and port 3 on. So in peripherals, you go to this IO ports and click this IO ports. Now click on run. So this is how we are going to click on run. And during run mode, you can change the value of P2 port P2 and those change will be also reflected or the data transfer from port 2 to port 3 will happen. So see here I am clicking on this run and now if I am going to change any value of this port this P3 also will change. You can also have a delay loop in these two steps so that you can see the um, output or you know the output will be a little bit animated. So this is how you can check that whatever the values are being assigned to port 2, uh, that value is being transferred to port 3 as well. So this is how it can be demonstrated. Now if you want to come out of this, just simply click on stop debugging mode. So it will take you back to the project. Now in a similar concept, we can simulate on this Protease ISIS software. To do so, click on new canvas. So if the earlier design is not saved, it will prompt you to save. So I will save this design. So to save, you can simply click on yes and uh, you can browse to those files. You can uh, browse to that uh, folder and in either designs, you can save your the design. So I need this for future purpose, so I am saving this design. Now if you see this, I have got a new canvas to design. So to design our simulator here for this practical, you require two microcontrollers. So to pick the microcontroller, click on component mode, click on pick devices, type here 889C5.1, so this will this is already listed here, just select it and click OK. Then we also need an LED to demonstrate the output. So just check for any LED. You can take any LED, there are different variations in LED. Different colors of LEDs are available. So select any one of them. Now, since you have selected this microcontroller, now draw it on a canvas. So here I am drawing one. And here is the second because we are going to see how port of one microcontroller transfers data to the another port. And we also need one LED, so I am putting here this um, LED so that the output or the data transfer can be seen that this port is sending the data to this port, and through this port, the values are also simulating the LED. So now I will just connect in port this port P2 to this port P3 of another microcontroller. So we can have a neat diagram 
focus. This may take at least one or two minutes so that we can have proper connecting lines. There should not be miss while creating this or while joining these wires. So it is better you take some time and design it nicely so that later on also it shouldn't arise in confusion. So this way this port P2 is connected to the port P3 of next microcontroller. Now this LED can be joined to any of this wire so that we can just see that this data is being or the data is being transferred through this communicator to, through this line. So this LED needs a ground connection on the another end. So here on this terminal mode I would select the ground then place it here press the S head and connect this ground to this LED is another terminal. Now to this microcontroller I need to write the or I need to use the program that we have created. So that was here so I just check with the objects so this was port demo data transfer yes this is the hex file that we have just created you can change your frequency or else so you can keep it same there won't be any problem just click on ok and click on this play simulation so you see the data is being transferred and Accordingly, the LED is also getting this value. Now, since we have not used delay loop here, you won't be seeing that it is animated. But if you are going to use delay, it, this output can be seen animated. So, here I'll try to put some delay. So, if I'm going to add a delay function to this program, and if I'm going to call this delay function, after every step, you will see the output animated. So this is the function prototype. This is the function definition. And uh, here, I need to use this delay. So I will be calling this delay function here and define these two statements. So you see, if you are going to do this, you have to build it again. The hex file will again be created with zero errors and zero warnings. Then you can also check on this debugging mode. So you see this ports now. If I'm going to click on run and if I'm going to change the value here, after some time the value is being reflected here in this port you see. So this is where you can see that the data is being transferred and you see little bit delay is there. Earlier there wasn't such considerable delay. So this is how you can check the output to come out of this click on this start stop debugging mode. So I have added the delay function here. Now if you are going to use or if you are going to change the value of P2 and that value you want to assign to this P3 you can actually remove this or you can keep this value same and you can start P2's value also with 0 and here you can add one line that is P2 plus plus. So this will increment the value of P2 and accordingly it will assign the value to P3 after some delay. So I will save it build it again and now I'll check here the output on this microcontroller. So you see this is showing animated value. So whenever there will be the input on any of this line because we have connected this LED to this line. So if 
you want to select or if you want to check whether the data is going through all the lines, you can do this by having more LEDs here. So here I'm adding another LED. So you can actually have eight different LEDs here and then you can check on different themes. This way you can trim it a little bit. So now I'm adding my next, I'm just keeping one line or and then I'm adding this LED. So it's just like it for an animation purpose, but you should see that the data transfer is being done. So now you see this. If you're going to execute this, this will show you some animated output. So whenever there will be the value on another thing, so you see this LEDs are blinking. So this way we can check that how one microcontroller is transferring data to another microcontroller. And then these ports, these general purpose ports can be used to check this data transfer this way. Thank you so much for watching this video.